happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're doing well and uh, had a good week. And looking forward to a good weekend. It's a beautiful day here today. You look out the window and it's bright sunshine. And this looks wonderful until you look at the temperature. And then you see it's minus 23 and you kind of go, Ooh, yeah, I don't think I want to go out there. <laughs> anyway, that's what the weather's like here in beautiful Regina, Saskatchewan. I uh, don't know what it's like where you are, but I hope you're enjoying your day anyway. All right, let's get on with our normal Friday routine. We have two shout outs today. The first is for a fellow in Maine who uh, calls himself the Mainly Digger, but his YouTube channel is Brian Clooney. And I think you'll enjoy his channel. Brian's a just really down to earth fellow who loves metal detecting. And uh, his latest hobby, which he uh, is due to a Christmas gift he was given, is drone flying. And so he talks about that as well. He also takes us around on some little tours of uh, historic places in Maine. So check out Brian Clooney. And I'll put links to these channels in the description box, as I always do. And the next video, or next video, sorry, the next channel I want to shout out is Digging with Deej. Uh, wonderful lady. She does metal detecting and uh, historic uh, videos about historic places. And she also does bottle digging and relic digging. And uh, is a very knowledgeable person and very, uh, very warm and loving and, and uh, puts up enjoyable videos. So check out Digging with Deej. All right, so that's your two for today. Brian Clooney and digging with Deej. All right, let's get on to our story time, shall we? Well, today, I just want to put things in perspective for you. And uh, this is talking about our universe. You ever thought about how big our universe actually is? Well, let's have a look at it. It says, a scientist suggested an interesting analogy. To grasp the scene, imagine a perfectly smooth glass pavement on which the finest speck can be seen. Then shrink our sun from 600, or sorry, 865,000 miles in diameter to only two feet and place the ball on the pavement to represent the sun. Can you imagine that? Say a two foot diameter beach ball. Okay, and that's gonna be the sun in our universe. Step off 82 paces about two feet per pace to represent proportionately the first planet, Mercury, and put down a tiny mustard seed. So think about that. You've gone from a two foot diameter ball to a mustard seed, which is, well, tiny. <laughs> Take 60 more paces and for Venus, put down an ordinary BB. Mark 78 more paces and put down a green pea to represent the Earth. Step off 108 paces from there and for Mars, put down a pinhead. Sprinkle around some fine dust for asteroids and then take 788 steps and for Jupiter, Place an orange on the glass at that spot. Then take 934 more paces and put down a golf ball for Saturn. Now it gets really involved. Mark 2,086 paces more and for Uranus, a marble. Another 2,322 steps from there and you arrive at Neptune. Let a cherry represent Neptune. This will take two and a half miles, and we haven't even discussed Pluto. If we swing completely around, we have a smooth glass surface five miles in diameter, yet just a tiny fraction of the heavens, including Pluto. On this surface, five miles across, we have only a seed, a BB, a pea, a pinhead, some dust, an orange, a golf ball, a marble, and a cherry. Guess how far we'd have to travel to put down, sorry, guess how far we'd have to go on 
in the same scale before we could put down another two-foot ball to represent the nearest star. Come on, guess. I'll give you a few minutes. 700 paces? 2,000? 4,000? No, you're way off. We would have to go 6,720 miles before we could arrive at that star. Miles, not feet. And that's just the first star among millions. In one galaxy among perhaps thousands, maybe billions, and of all its perpetual motion, perfectly synchronized, the most accurate timepiece known to man. Phenomenal, isn't the word for it? Pretty amazing, huh, when you think about that. You'd have to five, need a five-mile diameter circle just to represent our solar system, not including Pluto. Wow. It does kind of put things in perspective. I remember once a great evangelist would always go out in the evening before he preached and stare up at the stars in the sky. And a friend of his asked him why he did that, and his response was, I need to remind myself how tiny and insignificant I am to keep me humble. And when I look at the heavens, it makes me realize how insignificant I am in the greater scheme of things. So there you have it. You think about that. If a P represents the Earth in a five-mile radius circle, or a five-mile five diameter circle, sorry, and you're living on that P, how tiny are you? Hmm. Now that really does put things in perspective. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the story time today and gives you something to think about. Well, now it's time for the Groaner of the Week. Well, there was a lovely, passionate, and caring pastor who had one of his parishioners die, an elderly gentleman who had served in the uh, Merchant Marines for years. And the fellow didn't have much, but what he had, he decided that he would leave to this pastor. So the pastor was quite surprised. Well, among the, among the few possessions there was, was a parrot. And so the pastor lovingly accepted this parrot that had been a longtime companion of this merchant marine. And it didn't take him long to discover that the parrot's vocabulary consisted mostly of cussing, swearing, uh, making sexual innuendos, and telling ribald jokes. And the pastor just wasn't sure what to do about this. He was, didn't want to get rid of the bird because it had been left to him by this parishioner. But he just you know, thought, well, I really can't have this kind of a parrot in my my home, you know, considering my position in, in the society. Well, one Sunday after the church service at coffee hour, he's discussing this with one of his elderly lady parishioners, and he says, you know, I just don't know what to do. And she says, well, I have a suggestion. And he says, what's that? Bring your parrot over to my place. I have a parrot, too. I've had it since I was about 12 years old. And she is the most pious parrot you've ever met. She spends all her time praying. I can hear her. Once in a while I hear the word. She, she knows the Lord's Prayer and she knows other prayers. And uh, she spends most of her time with her head bowed praying. So maybe if you bring your parrot over and let it spend some time with my parrot, she'll have a good influence on him and, and can turn things around. So the pastor agrees to do that. They set a, a time and a date to do that. And when the time and date comes, the pastor takes the cage with his parrot in and goes to this lady's home, and they go in, and uh, they open the cage, take the fellow's parrot out, and they put him in the cage with the lady's parrot. Well, the first thing the pastor's parrot does is scoots along the little perch to the female parrot and goes, Hey, sweetie, how about a smooch? And the female parrot looks at him and goes, looks up and says, My prayers have been answered. <laughs> There you go. Well, that was quite the groaner. But speaking of lovebirds, well, I don't know if those few parrots were lovebirds or not, but uh, speaking of lovebirds, I received this on uh, Wednesday, a belated Christmas card. You can see that. It says, Peace and Joy. And inside, it says, Ian and Glennis, wishing you joy in the trend in the traditions of the season. Sorry, the, the, I got my tongue wrapped around my eye tooth and I couldn't see what I was saying there for a moment. So 
Let me read that again. Ian Inglenis, wishing you joy in the traditions of the season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, the Steve and Nina Show. So there we have it. Let's see the inside if you want. And uh, Steve and Nina have an anniversary coming up here pretty quick. So if you know Steve, if you watch the Steve and Nina Show, you might want to pop an anniversary card in the mail to them. You might get there late now, but hey, as they say, better late than never, right? Except in the case of a stay of execution, which, uh, yeah, late doesn't do any good, right? <laughs> anyway, until uh, Tuesday when we do something fun in the kitchen, take care, stay safe, and God bless.